So we were talking about structures, and the last thing that we talked about was CGI. So let's now see how to implement these structures in codes. So let us first start our notepad, and let us take a new window, and let us rename it as structures and remember that your file extension must always be cfm or cfml otherwise the server won't recognize your codes and remember to start your xam server before you start coding so let us create cf script let us first write this cf script drag and we'll need to store our structures inside a variable so that we can refer to it when we output it using CF output. So the first thing that we are going to look at is how to output CGI information. And what we mean by CGI information? CGI is a structure that stores variables which as I talked about earlier stores all the information about your server. So as we are running localhost in our machine this will consist of all the information about our localhost. So let us first create a variable called server name. And because this is a structure and this is no string, I'm not using any sort of quotation marks. Otherwise, if it was a string, you would have used single or double quotation marks. So I want to address the server name inside the server name variable inside the CGI. So CGI then dot notation server name and remember to end your uh, statement with semicolon and the next CGI variable we'll be looking at is the port number. CGI and server port number and now we can refer these variables easily using our CF output tag so let us write a message we are running and let us reference the server name variable in it. We are running this server which is using and by the way we can use our HTML tags with it. So I'm going to use the bold HTML tag with server name and with the server port number so let us now reference this port server port number in, in this second pair of bold tags and let's save this file and now we're going to run this in our browser so we need a new window for this Remember to write the correct file location of your structures.cfm, otherwise the server won't run that code. So, localhost called fusion. I think that was C fusion www root and structures dot cfm this code is running successfully but I think I made a mistake with this port number so we can actually see another CGI that is going to show us uh, whether our ports are secure or not so let's change this variable server underscore port underscore secure and let's change this name and let's say we name it is secure this variable will hold either one or zero for one we mean it's true 
and for zero we mean false so if our server connection is using an HTTPS that means our server port is secure so the browser will print one which means our server is running on a secure connection but I mean our web uh, site is running on a secure connection but if our website is not running on a secure connection that's this would show zero so now let's change this variable name in here is secure save now let's check this yep now the code is running and because this is a local host and we haven't used any sort of HTTPS or SSL encryption for our website so it's showing that our server port is not secure for our website now there are tons of possibilities with structures so when we talk about structures we're also talking about how we can deal with structures using our query strings now query strings are an important topic in every web programming language whether it be cold fusion whether it be ASP.NET I mean if you're using C sharp or virtual basic in ASP.NET and whether it be or whether it be the cold fusion or CFML language so what is query string query string generally has the format that you can input a variable that holds a certain value uh, directly inside your URL so how do we input a variable directly through our URL inside this page it's just simple that any query string in whether it be PHP inside PHP or cold fusion it starts with question mark and suppose we want to output the variable that, that holds uh, my name and we want to output a variable of the value we want to output the value of the variable called h that holds a numeric value so the first variable we talked about is name so let us use the variable name and initialize with the value nafis that's my name and if we want to add another variable into this query string we add the ampersand ampersand symbol or this is also called the and symbol if you're confused about this ampersand name and if we want to output a numeric value we go on typing the name of the variable and assign suppose let's assign 20 so if you press enter this won't show anything so which means we need to use this variable to output something into our page so let us do this and go let us go back and change our code so let these things stay first now I didn't talk about this earlier although I talked about the CGI structures the built-in CGI structure inside cold fusion but there's another structure that cold fusion offers us that is its built-in URL structure now this URL structure can hold your custom named or customized variables that you name by yourself so let us now see how this works now we also need a variable called that we can name as my name and assign it with the structure URL dot name you can actually go on and directly write this into your CF output tags but it's better to initialize it or include it inside or store it inside a variable that way you don't have to change every time you type it in if you make a mistake so whatever it is let us write the name of the second perhaps the fourth variable and this will be URL H so let us use those variables inside our CF output tags this will be my name is and we can reference the my name variable inside it my name is the variable and my age is let's reference the fourth variable here which is called my age and remember to always end your statements with this semicolon because if you don't end the statement as a semicolon the cold fusion server will report a bug inside your code so let us now save this and let's see what happens now we can see that our page has successfully loaded 
these variables. We have passed through the query string that we wanted the page to output the name Nafis or we wanted the page to output the variable that contains the value Nafis and we also wanted to output the value of 20 that is included inside this vari variable called age. Now if you notice carefully generally when we declare a variable inside our script and we initialize with a value inside it suppose let's go back to our notepad and let us write another new variable let us declare a new variable called message and let's initialize this with a string and we shall write this is a message now if you look at this carefully this message variable contains a string call that uh, that starts and ends with double quotation marks but inside this browser we are looking at another string a variable called name that consists of a string value but this string value has no quotation mark so it is important to know that when we initialize a value uh, when we initialize a variable with a value that is string we do not use a quotation mark either it be single quotation mark or double quotation mark we use neither of them inside our query string so this is an important point and now if we want to go and change this suppose let's write my second name Ahmed and let's change this value to 30 and let's look at the result and the page successfully responds to my request